you knew Paul Dillette, you mentioned him? I used to train with Paul. What I happened to him? Like, I don't, for those who don't know, like what happened to him? He, he, he left or something? He left the camera? Well, he never, you know, a lot of people had issues with Wayne D'Amelia. Wayne used to run the Olympia. Um, and uh, he was, you know, one of the big wigs in the IFBB. And, uh, and a lot of, like, Lee Priest had issues with him too. I've always got, I, I get along with pretty much everybody. I try to stay like, yeah. you know, Switzerland <laughs> to a certain degree because everyone has their moments, even myself. So I try not to really judge or take sides because that can always change throughout the years. You know, and that's how I am with, I tell my, my, uh, my friends, you know, when they break up with a girl, I said, I don't want to hear any bad mouthing because you'll be back with her in two months and then I know all this information, too much information, you know. So Paul, um, Paul left because he didn't get along with the organization basically? Yeah, pretty much, you know. Um, Paul wasn't as, how would you say, articulate as Sean. So it was very hard for him to kind of express what he wanted, you know, and it came out a little bit more aggressive. And um, I, I think he was just getting a little frustrated too. And then, you know, he's, he's from Canada. Canada right? So he went back up there and he started his own federation. He's making millions now. I mean, he's always inviting me. After I won Olympia, he wanted me to go out there and do my federation now, Danny. And this is Paul. They just, are you kidding me? <laughs> if I would have took like, you know, last place or something that I would maybe consider. But even then, it's like someone inviting you to go play, I don't, know, I don't want to diss anyone, but the Canadian League when you played in the NFL, you'd have to pay a lot more money. But even then, you'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm killing it out here. But, you know. What was it like training? Because he was huge, right? His physique was, was absolutely but insane. He, he also had asthma. And so Paul really couldn't push at a fast pace. And I, I kind of enjoyed training with him in a way, because I'm not known to be really like super fast paced either. Um, I like to take longer in between sets, mm -hmm. which was good, but now it's not good because then this damn cell phone with social media now, mm -hmm. sometimes I get sidetracked mm -hmm. and I go twice as long as I should rather than, you know, finishing my next set. But Paul, Paul, uh, you, could, you could say he was really genetically gifted. He wasn't known for being strong. He wasn't known for training intense. Yeah. But he was good with his diet and nutrition. He was always in shape. That's the thing is, I don't know a lot of guys back in the day that would really get too like big other than the guys that were really trying to be a mass monster. You know, like Dorian, he looked like a whole different person off season. And he was just big. The priest would get really big, but they always came in shape. You know, and I think that's just a lot, very, the way their body functions, you know. And I was roommates with Lee Priest for a little while. I picked him up from the airport, I believe in 93, 94, when he first, or maybe it was 95, I don't know, the 90s. And, uh, and, uh, cause Ed Connors, you know, the owner of Gold's Gym, right there, the Mecca, uh, he was a architect, so he had houses all along the beach and he would let athletes stay there. And I, all I had to do was watch, I watched one of his houses, I think it was, I don't know how many millions it was at the time, it was beautiful, right there on the sand. All I had to do was take his mail in one of those houses, so it looks like someone lived there, so people wouldn't break in, and water his plants. I knew I wasn't good at plants, because all his plants were dead. <laughs> so he had Lee Priest come and stay, you know, but I learned a lot from Lee too. And he, you know, he, he, he's very, his receptors, I mean, he takes a little bit of gear and wow. It's, and everybody always claims that, but definitely he was gifted in that division. We did a documentary on Lee Priest, and um, in a documentary he was basically saying that he was trying to organize everybody to start a union and kind of like a rebel against the organization. He and did. He, but he wasn't getting support from everybody. Well, was he trying to convince you to join, and like, what, what was the reasoning behind maybe you're not doing it? Or well, other, other people not joining him? Why do you think they didn't want to support his cause? I really think the only one that would be able to do it is, is I would have to say, someone that has won the uh, multiple Olympians. For people to follow him. Yeah. I see. You, you have to have enough clout in the industry, you know, and respect. Um, and 
you, you, you're kind of like the ambassador for the industry to a certain degree when you win, you know, that that would be the only person that would be able to do that. Not after they retired, but when they're on top and a lot of people aren't really willing to risk that. Because they're on top, why, why even do that, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's tough, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just like in any, anything else, pretty much.